whether someone agrees with fighting in hockey or opposed to fighting, the role of the enforcer is a huge part of hockey history. I love that quote. And I'm excited to chat with our next guest, Chris Dingman, who is part of the new documentary, Ice Gardens, which is the film that is honoring the personal stories of these warriors and what they had to do to make their dreams come true. I love, finally, the enforcers are getting some light here. Chris, how you doing? Doing good, thank you. Well, I'm excited you are here, and of course we have to spend some time eventually talking about the lightning, but first I want to talk about, I want to talk about this film. Because an enforcer, it's a term that many people maybe recognize, but they really don't know, and a lot of misconceptions. So how would you explain the role? Uh, an enforcer is a guy that maybe um, takes care of things. When someone's going after a skilled player or playing a little too rough, he's the guy that goes out and says, yeah, you're not going to do that anymore, or you're going to have to deal with me. So there's different ways a guy would get a guy to stop doing something. He'd challenge him to a fight, or there was an instance of a guy that said every time you touch, let's say, Peter Forsberg, uh, Steve Eiserman, he's mm -hmm. going to get hit. So it's kind of that, it, he was that guy that made sure that the Wayne Gretzky's of the world back in the day could play the way they wanted to play and not have to worry about getting hit or run. And, you know, I grew up in Edmonton, Alberta, and loved watching Gretzky and Messier, but uh, I think you only saw Wayne Gretzky get hit hard once because I think every... Every team going in there, playing against them, knew they had McSorley, McClellan. And, mm -hmm. uh, they had five or six guys that, you know, make your life miserable if you took too many liberties with them. You know, and I don't think that people realize that that kind of does protect some of the skilled guys. And you have to embrace the role that you were given. And so you're finally kind of honoring that role. With that said, the misconceptions around fighting in hockey. What does fighting in hockey provide? Well, entertainment <laughs> and uh, a spark for your team also. And it's, uh, you know, one thing to, if a guy's running around too much, you want to get him to quiet down. But also if your team's a little flat, you know, guys were good and notorious for getting into a good fight. And then guys would say, okay, fighting's not fun. You know, some guys enjoy it a little bit, but, you know, it's not that much fun getting punched in the face or, you know, taking too many blows. So, uh, you know, a lot of times it'd be a way to change momentum in a game if your team wasn't playing very well or a little flat. So guys would use that as a way to, to fire their team up. And, you know, I got to say, you know, I was able to work in the league and I will go up against anybody that hockey is the toughest sport out there. I truly believe that. But after year after year, it's demanding on the it's demanding on the body, no matter what position you play, especially an enforcer. Talk about the longevity and how, you know, <laughs> you guys need to be honored because it's, it's a brutal beating, literally. Well, it's, you know, all this stuff with concussions and, and all those things that are coming up now. And I've had a few and, you know, it sheds some light on that, that, uh, you know, obviously it's a tough job, but uh, I think with fighting, I only had two concussions. A lot of them came from hits and, you know, bent and body checked and, and sticks and, and uh, a couple pucks. Uh, I took a couple to uh, one to my nose, which is actually how it got broken. But, uh, you know, there's uh, it's tough on the hands. Uh, most guys' hands are a little, little crooked and a little beat up. But, uh, you know, some of the best in the business, uh, you know, you can play a good 10, 12, 14 years, the Bob Proberts, the Ty Domies. And, you know, some of those guys were skilled players. And a lot of people don't realize that, you know, even for myself, when I was playing, uh, when I was younger and I was playing, I used to score a lot of goals. And then, you know, you get to a team, and I, I for example, I got to Colorado, and you look at that team, and you got Forsberg and Sackick and mm -hmm. Rob Blake and Ray Bork, and I'm looking around saying, what am I doing with this team? Like, we got 10 future Hall of Famers, and, you know, how was I going to make that team? And it wasn't going to be by scoring goals, and they needed a guy to play a physical game. So, you know, for a lot of guys, it's out of necessity that you're willing to do whatever it takes to play in the NHL, and that's something I was willing to do that, you know, it was a dream of mine, and, you know, it was a first-round pick, but things didn't work out with Calgary, the team I was drafted by. So you find a way to keep yourself in the league, and it's being good defensively and playing physical and fighting if need be and trying to buy yourself more time. And, you know, Bob Probert made it to the All-Star game one year, you know, scoring 20-plus goals and Ty Domi. And so there's guys like that that, you know, they play that role, and then it creates more room for themselves and for their line mates, and they're able to score goals and they're able to score points. And there's a reason why those guys are some of the most popular guys in their city because you know a lot of us are you know off the ice where there's a misconception that we're just crazy and we all we want to do is fight and <clears throat> last thing I want to do is fight I want to joke around and we we're talking <laughs> about you know before we we're talking about you know my ex-teammate Danny Hynot and mm -hmm. we had so much fun because you know, we're not playing a lot of minutes so we're sitting <laughs> on the bench and we're picking up stuff and chirping at other players on the other team and you know trying to keep ourselves in the game so you know I think that's the biggest misconception is that you see these big guys with beards and you know crooked noses and stuff and that we're just these big mean crazy guys and it couldn't be further from the truth like you know, we're some of the most caring guys and you know, when you fight a guy, and I don't know how many times I saw a guy after at a restaurant or, 
you know, on our bar and had a had a beverage with yep. him, and we talked about you know how we had to fight or something had happened, and you know, there's that mutual respect, and you know, what you do, you have mutual respect for people working in your business, and especially for us because we all understand that it's a dangerous job, and you know, you could get hurt very badly. So there's that uh, you know that respect in the code, what they talk about. I was going to say, well, I love that you broke it down. I was going to ask what you hope that the film <coughs> provides, but I think you just yeah. nailed it on what the film can show you. So, of course, we want to touch on that. December 12th at the Tampa Theater is actually an event that anyone can uh, attend and actually do a little Q&A with yourself. Yeah, there's different packages and sponsorship packages so you can stay in after and to get some Q&A. And I've watched a few of the videos and there's some good stories to be told. Okay, and I was going to say, I'm totally getting told to go to break, but I got to ask thoughts on the lightning this season. Oh, they'll be okay. They just need to get healthier. And missing Stephen Stamkos obviously hurts, but they found a way. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time. It's pleasure. been a pleasure talking with you.